Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In my studio today, um, I'm looking at sketches that I've done in the past that uh, I haven't got time to work up into a full-blown watercolour painting. So I've opened my sketch pad this morning and um, I've found a lovely little sketch that I did um, the, on the North Norfolk coast um, back in 2014. So it's going back a while, but uh, it's of Clyde Mill. Now, I've painted Clyde Mill many times, um, but uh, I've never created a version from this particular sketch that I made on one of my walks. So I'm going to show, lead you through that. Um, obviously, we've got the sails of the windmill and the fantail are white. And of course, the, the uh, cap of the mill. Um, but what I'm going to do to allow me a bit of freedom to put washers on, I'm going to use masking fluid for those areas. That way, when I create the washers, um, I'll be able to um, just have a bit of freedom with the uh, with the paint. Then, at the once it dries, you can rub them away and uh, tint them uh, as required. So, what I'd like to do, I'd like to lead you through the process of laying on uh, masking fluid. Now, the masking fluid that I'm using is the Windsor and Newton. Uh, it has a little bit of colour to it, not a lot. Um, they do the yellows and I think they do a, a blue that gives you some colour so you can see where you've put the, the paint, the, the fluid on. And the idea is that the masking fluid dries, then you can overpaint. <coughs> then, once the paper is dry, now that's crucial, once the paper is dry, you can then rub away with a putty rubber I even use my finger but you've got to be careful you don't oil the surface of the paper for future washers um, and um, then um, once you've rubbed it away you reveal the white paper underneath then you can tint if you require so let me show you how I apply masking fluid because it's a bit of a technique let me lead you through that process Well, here is my setup for this uh, morning's painting. Um, brushes, everything at hand, uh, normal setup. I've freshened my uh, materials up, uh, the paints, I mean, in that respect. Um, you know, the colours uh, give them a good freshen up. So um, hopefully um, they're nice and soft now, all ready um, to apply uh, to the paper. Well, there's the drawing that I've put down onto my watercolour paper. As you can see, the mill stands up slightly off the centre to the left. Got the lovely old buildings in the lower part of the uh, um, lower part of the mill. Um, well painted this uh, this mill up in the North Norfolk coast. Bit of distance there, running away, and of course the um, the reed bed in the foreground. But of course it's the sails. Now the first thing you do when you look to paint the sails of a windmill and you require washes underneath, you need a water jar, you need, in this case, a rigger. Just any, any rigger will do. Um, but this one doesn't hold a great deal of water, which is ideal for this exercise. Um, now you clean, you make certain that all of the air is out of the brush because once the masking fluid penetrates the brush then you will have problems with, um, with removing that and it can stick and cause lots of problems to the brush um, afterwards. But this is my favourite way of, of using uh, masking fluid. Right, so you've got most of the moisture, that all the brush is completely clean, uh, uh, with completely filled with water. 
Then we go into the masking fluid, like that, picking up not too much. Then we paint, let's just do the main arteries first. Paint right the way through, like that. Then, quickly, we clean the brush. Now this is vital. You can see it's already dried on the shank of the brush, but the main thing is keep it out of the hairs. Then, we go back into the masking fluid again, remove some more, and then we do, we do this one now. Nice clean sweep right the way down. Everywhere you paint, you will have masking fluid. And this one is not all that colourful. So, and all you do, you continue painting like that. Now we do have a double layer here and there where it gets a little wider. So, you know, the, the actual mill itself the but don't forget cleaning the the brush on a regular basis vital part of the process okay into the masking fluid removing some now we can paint the cross sections just do a little like that and then clean. Make certain you keep that brush free from masking fluid. There we go. And that's all you need to do. A thorough wash at the end normally is sufficient. Let's do the outside of that while we have enough on the brush. There we go. Clean again. Into the masking fluid. Paint away gently on the paper. Everywhere you touch will have cover for your paint. So that you end up with uh, a nice fresh clean wash underneath. Then I'll show you when we peel this away uh, exactly um, what you get. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the, the sails of the mill, the fantail, uh, the cap. I'm actually going to paint around that. Uh, I should do the, the door. I'm doing the gantry too, because that is white. Um, windows in the lower area I'm going to leave anyway. I don't think there's any problems with that. Um, so um, let me carry on with this, uh, with this process. Good, well let's get cracking. I'm going to use a number four um, Della Rowney uh, pointed wash brush. Um, I'm using the water um, that I used to freshen my paints. That way I've got a bit of every colour in there. I don't know whether that really makes any difference, but and what I'm going to do, I want to damp. See, because I masked all of the all of the areas behind the sails, I now have license to paint over. I'm going to just watch out for the um, cap of the mill, um, because that is going to be um, um, left white, and also this paint around that. I think 
while I've got the opportunity because if I don't and I go on it it's going to be um, not going to be white anymore which is what it should be and also I'm leaving the tower unpainted as well and notice how I'm damping at random really see the little puddles of uh, water hanging there waiting they're calling out for paint to be laid in uh, be nice and damp in the lower area now I'm going to paint this as a uh, as a cloudy sky so I'm going to use Payne's grey for an initial overall wash well not overall wash but for areas around the top there and when I go into the dry areas you'll notice that the paint, you get hard edges now that is the start of the clouds um, going to be a little darker up the top there because my thoughts on this one is that it's a bit of a thundery cloud coming um, and uh, but the sunlight is standing out in clear making the, the building stand out in clear relief and I'm going then into the lower part creating smaller cloud shapes buildings will be darker so I don't care if I overpaint those nice bit of cloud work there I like that there we go right the way down into the distance now I'm going to clean the brush now and apply a strong cobalt blue to this right hand corner my word look at that now that is what you'd class as a strong cobalt blue because that depicts the sunlight coming onto the building then I'm going to put in some little patches of blue here and there running into the grey little patches of blue there then I'm going in with less strength blues in the distance so a storm is just passing that could very well be what I call this storm passing no right now let's create the storm I'm going to put a bit of Indian red with that Payne's grey now to get a deeper sort of cloud feel to that overall wash of colour still damp in places which is exactly what I'm looking for really strong up the top the Indian red just helps to give that cloud a bit of strength don't necessarily want to go too dark um, just picking up the top of that last little cloud there then as I come down underneath those clouds picking around the cap of the mill vital that that's held fairly good shape for future reference there we are and then I'm putting in some smaller clouds running away into this distance there we are lovely cloud formations and if I think back it's not dissimilar to what the day was to be fair so that's always a bonus if you can remember the type of day it does help immensely to achieve the uh, desired effect now just want to make certain that I've cleaned down the edge of the tower in a good fashion like that and what you do to one side of the tower I recommend you do to the other and just watch where the puddles of paint hold because they can tend to cause more uh, problems yep looks pretty good to me okay little ray of light doesn't matter about that and then I'm just going to soften some areas 
not not a great deal so I use a damp brush a little bit of paint sorry no paint just a damp brush soften that area like that soften that a uh, little bit on that lower area there but other than that I'm going to leave well alone because I'm pretty much happy with that be very careful when you soften areas like this in case you add too much water and it all flows into um, into the back and you get those cauliflower effects I think you all know what they are For those of you that don't they're run backs basically the paint runs back and hangs there and creates you just imagine the top of a cauliflower that's what it creates really um, and while I have this color in I'm now going to paint the distance starting off with cobalt blue with a touch of light red not too much mainly blue and that is for a little bit stronger the water because the sky is damp it takes the paint goes away into the distance there are there is some distant land here very distant land like that then I'm going to add a little raw sienna to that to create the top of that to create a sort of a a mid-tone sort of color and what I'm going to do be quite dark there this is sort of like a green, a mid-tone green. And because I'm going up into that damp paper, it's all lovely and soft. There we are. Look at that. A little bit more up into there. Just darkening one or two areas. Just to give that sense of trees running away. Like that. Then... As I come down into the foreground, or the far distance, I'm going to just wipe in some of that colour, that raw sienna. Okay, then I'm going to take a flat brush, just thought of this, I think it'll be good if I do, and just lift off the moisture some of the moisture along that bottom edge because I'm going to put in some darker hedging there okay now we can do an overall wash onto the reed beds starting off with raw sienna sweeping right the way through lemon yellow because I want that to be lovely and bright around that front of that building that's where that building the you know the frontage of, of, of the building um, need to have that little bit of uh, depth and, and light just got something to lift off here in the distance before that runs back into our famous cauliflower effects but other than that it's all looking quite reasonable right now a bit more lemon cadmium lemon be fine there we are now i'm dropping raw sienna in in places this is a reed bed, but you can use a sort of a downward strokes if you wish, which I've just thought about doing, which will help to give a bit of height to some of this, these reeds, but not too much in the distance. They'll all be, be about foreground really. And then a bit of burnt sienna. Point of the brush, nice bit of burnt sienna flicking up into areas particularly on the side there this will all be painted later on but obviously for the first washes that's probably good a bit of, bit of burnt umber and all right in the foreground don't know why but there you go just thought and use the point of the brush again as it dries you'll get the impression of these more foreground reeds um, this depends you have to balance your picture so whether anything else will need to be done uh, to this foreground, I can't tell you at this stage. And that is the start of our Cly Mill painting on the North Norfolk coast. 
Well, that's nicely dry. We've got a nice, uh, nice and dry. The um, masking fluid has dried off very nicely. Needs rubbing away shortly. But in the meantime, let's get some colour down onto the rest of the uh, the building, shall we? <clears throat> right now. The tower of the mill, I'm going to use light red. It is a very red tower. Well, it is aged, so obviously it's not too brilliant. But um, I'm putting up a little bit of raw sienna with that to start with, and quite a lot of water. Remember, the light is coming from the right, it's coming this way. So Keep under that cap area. It's got a bit of an angle to it. And we come down the sunlit side. Like that. We need to go right the way down. We've potentially masked away the gantry. It's a bit of an bit of a arch to that. Because we're looking up to it really. Okay, so let's put that all on there like that. Might as well paint this as if. It was um, the finished article because I think it would be nice to do that. There you go. Right, so that's the real sunlit side. Um, and what I'm going to do, remove a bit of moisture from the brush and just take away a bit of colour because I want that to really sing that front, that front edge. Right. Now I'm going to introduce a little Indian red to that because it will be darker now because we come round to the sort of shadow side really like that. Clean the brush, remove some of the moisture, take away the excess paint there and then to that Indian red I'm going to add ultramarine blue. And finally, you end up with a very deep, dark, lovely dark colour. There you go. Sleep that down the back. Try and get rid of a lot of that white paper. There we are. And that can go up a little higher, I think. Like that. And that should bleed round very, very nicely to create a rounded effect. Well, that's the theory. I'm also going to paint underneath it's a bit of a bit of white bit of shadow underneath that area there. There we are. Clean the brush. Okay. Take away surplus at the bottom. Just a little area there that's run over, so we'll remove that the kitchen towel. Could remove it afterwards, but I've removed it now. Then, on the back edge, all of a sudden, going to bang in some blue. That contrasts very dark, a little bit under there too, against the very light side. And that is all we need to do for the tower to show up the lovely sunlit feel that we have there on the day that I was actually there. It was quite sunlit too. Got a nice sunny day that. Just tweak around the edges there. Good. Allow that to dry. Don't play with it. So I'm telling myself not to play with it. Right. Clean the brush. Now buildings. Red tile roofing in sunlight. Going to try a different mix this time. All is in crimson. Raw sienna. Give us a nice red tile. Fairly dark, but not too dark. Lovely red tile roofing. Stand out against the sunlight extremely well. That is a mix that an artist friend of mine, James Fletcher Watson, used to use quite often. And uh, uh, so 
and I did find that it worked for me too extremely well for red tile roofing and after all he came from Norfolk originally before he moved down to the Cotswolds so for a Norfolk man he should know what colour mix for Norfolk slate and he certainly did now I'm adding more yellow to that just to ring the changes on to this bit of slate work there there we go try and be as quick as you can when you paint these areas because the quicker you paint the better the result in the end uh, with watercolor in general um, right adding more blue to that now just to tone it back just a touch to start with for this one here keep a bit of red on that don't want that to go too needs red but it doesn't want to be too brilliant there we are that that would be it and there's another red tile roof there that's it and there is another one there like that remember these are all the sunlit edges there's no shadow on these finish there oh and that's also a roof area I think it goes back a bit but we've got a bit of hedging coming in on the right then in the distance add a lot more blue and considerably darker because there is some cl clouds up there so I would suggest that these are in cloud cover and that those cottages actually run right the way through but I'm going to finish them there there you go and I'm putting the chimneys in at the same time chimney pots a couple of nice chimneys there is a row of these cottages that if you come in from the other side of the village you can see stand out quite nicely I've painted the other side of the um, village um, but um, this is fairly well still a nice subject the other side I just like painting this side really due to the fact that I've got that um, nice uh, sketch to work to okay right next comes the building themselves well very light extremely light they are flint so that's going to be quite flint that's raw sienna this is going to be a little darker but that's raw sienna as well i'm leaving the windows white paper at this stage a bit of flint down there that's flint as well there we go run that through and i suppose this is also flint which i know it is actually don't think we've got any red tiles there now i'm adding a little more blue now to pick up the gable ends purely because they're in the distance and we don't want that flint color to dominate there we are and you just paint that in like that nice and neat and clean and tidy uh, good let's allow that to dry well while that is drying I'm going to paint in the little building that sits on the back edge of that there and that's Indian red and ultramarine blue then I'm adding a lot more blue that will be in shadow you see from the because it's at the back of the building I'm adding more blue now to create a very dark sort of because very dark color because this is actually bordered area it's treated treated black boards I think don't think that's brick on the back there but either way we're not too concerned because we're going to paint that in as if it's in shadow anyway good and while I'm doing this I'm going to put watch I don't touch the rest of the paint window there 
I think you'll find there's a window there. Should have a white surround, but because I never painted the white surround, we'll just put the dark in. Yep, that's uh, that's quite good. Now, while I have this colour, I'm going to paint the windows here. Just suggesting glazing. Remember, light coming from the right. It's really just a suggestion of glazing. We are getting a bit of bleed, which I'm not concerned about. Well, it's too late now anyway, even if I'm concerned. Um, I think there's a window there. I think there's probably one there and one there. And, uh, good. I think that's a door, actually. So let's go right the way down with that. Finish that there. Brilliant. Nice little bit of blur of colour. I like that. Don't mind that at all. Right, now while that is drying, let's deal with the background now. And in other words, that area there. We're using ultramarine blue and raw sienna for distant trees. Dark, probably in shadow. And simply painted fairly straight along the bottom I know it's reed beds but we wouldn't see reeds at this distance it'd be jagged, it'd be uneven but then as we move along a bit more water a bit more blue give a feel of depth that's what I'm trying to do with this hedging like that a bit more water a bit more blue so we're getting lighter as we head away behind the cottage. There. Maybe just a little higher area there. Brilliant. Just soften that a little bit. There we are. Just see how that gives depth. We, we've got a bit more yellow in that, into the ultramarine. More blue as we go along and weaker. And all of a sudden, you and also... Not quite so high, tall, gradually tapering. Gives a lovely feeling that there's distant um, hedging that just runs away uh, behind the um, the cottage in, that stands in front of the mill. Right, well, we're getting fairly close to taking off the masking fluid, I suppose. Before I do that, I'm just going to remove because I've got hard edges with the, the um, masking fluid for the fantail, but I'm going to use, I'm going to soften that to try and get back, because this paint's grey, doesn't uh, come off that easily. You know, you can't, so that's a good idea if you want soft sort of feel to the fan tail. See the way it's lifting off some colour. The white strut will be shown when I lift off the masking fluid. Here we are. And I can use a uh, kitchen paper. Oh, I've got an old piece here, never mind. Just to lift off a bit of colour. There we go. So that should work particularly well for the fan tail at the back. Um, Okay, now we must make certain that the paper is completely dry before we remove the masking tape, uh, fluid. If we don't, you could end up with lots of problems of the paper tearing. So be very careful with that. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to pick up this small brush again and paint in a tree that's coming on the right hand side. See where I've left the, um, the gap there for this tree and that's going to be winter blue and raw sienna notice I'm using a stronger blue this time it can be very dark but it's um, it's more local colour than ultramarine and raw sienna because the blue has a different uh, 
different blue change your blues change the yellows you use and all of a sudden you've got a different uh, feeling of perspective in your color because perspective is all about color you use as well as size and shape of things and this is a lovely old tree standing up there or at least I did the, the drawing as a lovely old tree presumably it's uh, it's that it's like that and it overhangs that building there so it must stand fairly fairly forward in actual fact I'm depicting it as if it stands right on the in front of these buildings overhangs quite nicely those buildings gives a nice little bit of punch to that left hand side now as we come down I'm adding burnt sienna because we're getting to the reeds so we're going to have to be a bit reedy with our uh, brush strokes in this lower area all right I'm not they're not reeds they're not I'm not depicting them as reeds but um, when you paint back in you can then give a jagged edge to make it look like reeds standing up there we are so that's something that you need to remember when you're painting working my way along now it's not what you paint in it's what you leave out a bit more burnt sienna a bit stronger now as we come just put a bit of that here and there as we come towards the front edge all little dots and dabs and and this little area I did do the drawing so it could be a change there we are see the way I'm sweeping that through it could be a change of depth I've got a feeling there's a little creek that runs up there to the back of the mill and that's where you begin to see the different change of land between the middle distance and the far distance good let's uh, allow that one to dry well that's dried off very very nicely now I'm going to paint the cap of the mill before I remove any masking fluid um, and really this is just a shadow really and all you do for that is um, just trying to think shadow on the back edge like that and also the little cap at the top okay and then when we come round to the sunlit side we just soften it like that with water and eventually removing any surplus paint and all of a sudden we've got a nice feeling of a cap we'll tighten that all up um, in due course I think there's a little bit too much let's just remove a bit of paint there with the point of the brush there we are and we'll just put some shadow on there there we go um, as I say we'll tidy that all up uh, shortly brilliant now while we're waiting for that to dry I'm going to paint ah, I can see what I need to do just remove that masking fluid there all right so all of a sudden that is brought into sunlight then we've got just got to paint the sky It's coming through those railings there we are so all you need to do if you're looking to finish that off so that's the sky coming through the railings um, and notice how they're wide openings there and then as they go around the corner they narrow uh, because it's 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 perspective again if you just keep them wide like that it looks as if it just runs across but it doesn't it runs round the tower of the mill just removing masking fluid that I put in on top of that little um, bit of gantry uh, 
little detail on top of the not sure what it is but I'm gonna leave plenty of little bits of white just to show sunlight catching that um, not sure what it is actually but it's something to do with the architecture on the top of that build there good okay well I'm looking to remove the masking fluid but I'm just looking to see that that is completely dry there to be very careful um, okay let's just give that a moment to dry right now that should be dry so I'm going to use finger for removing this masking fluid all I'm doing is just rubbing the paper just hoping that it doesn't tear around the there we are it's perfect thought it should be dry just dusting off all of those little bits and pieces and all of a sudden the sails are revealed in all their glory um, it's a matter of a little bit of shadow work now really um, and I'm going to start off the shadows on the sails and the um, the fantail just got to do one thing and sometimes this happens quite quite a lot when you lay masking fluid on you can't quite see where you've put the masking fluid but there's an area there that needs to be over painted that's white there we are just allow that to dry it's just tidied up that little area there that'll dry nicely um good okay well we've got the mill we've got sunlight on the mill now we need sunlight on the um the fan tail and everything at the back right now there is a bit of a, gant a part of the gantry there that stands out that will have shadow running like that underneath like that just be careful you don't over paint and we will have a little bit of thickness to a part of the gantry there then there is a bit of fencing safety fencing anyone that's been to the mill would know what I'm talking about so I'm putting that in darker quite a legitimate thing to do under the circumstances there we go and just soften that a little just so as that runs into that just put a little bit of deeper color in there there we go just to show a real back edge to that um, fan tail and the mix for this is ultramarine and Indian red not too much Indian red to start with because this is a white area which needs to be tinted right there holding the fan tail is a gantry area like that and it's based at the back but it's got sunlight on it may not have actually bearing in mind the sun is coming from the right so let's just put that half in sunlight half in shadow there we are that justifies that shadow there see that um, the back edge of the supports not the front edge like that we have a center where the um, fan tails are attached now I'm using a very light mix here to indicate the fact that there is a fan tail there see the way I've done that just to give that a uh, little bit of sense of blades on the fan tail just a little bit on the outer edge there we are perhaps a little bit wider in places um, that could be sort of half in there like that 
and we could have another half sort of like tapered they also run at an angle so we'll have to watch that that we try and get that somewhere near right that one is a little less this one's a little less and I think that probably does it for what we're looking for there we are let's connect them up to that center piece there brilliant well that seems to have come off quite well now the main um, part of the um, the sails it's quite a thin area there so I'm just going to paint that down like that but then it comes into a thicker strut as it meets where it lays across the actual mill itself like that yep then we have another right now this is where it gets interesting just got to watch here that we don't add too many of these little touches there is a bit of shadow down and under down and under just knowing where these shadows would appear really um, down down there down there down there that's it just gives them a, gives, gives the sails just a little bit of um bit of interest and of course there would be just a touch on the back edge of that just to show the thickness of the sails there and let's do this one next well that'd be the top edge of that i think that would be in shadow the underside of that like that and the underside of that i would presume would have shadow and yeah perhaps the underside of that thicker area there and that's going to lay underneath that one well and then we have that there 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 like that and then we just come down there just have some little touches there or a little bit on the underside of that it's it's all just a sh sharpening up really of the um of the sails that's all i'm doing just sharpening them up really um just to try and give ourselves some justification for the weight of them it's all all a matter of the weight of them really that's it and then we come down to this one which will taper underside and across underside across that's it a little bit on the bottoms there that would be in reflect in shadow yeah i think that's quite successful um, don't want to make it look too too brand new I mean it's it is aged it's an old mill so let's not make it look brand new um, just to give the, the whole thing a bit of aging really I'm putting a shadow on the inside of that door reveal there like that which it would have the windows already got shadow so that's fine that's fine and a little bit on the underside of the gantry there like that bit down there a little bit underneath the gantry that'd be fine there you go good well basically i think that is the mill pretty much done just one other thing right at the center there is a nut a black nut that holds the whole Thing together so let's put that on yep and there may be something there too good 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 yes just not sure that that may be a little wide so 
let's do a little bit of lifting that shadow may be a little too thick there there you go that's better don't want too thick a shadow at that point there we are yeah purely because that's probably in sunlight in the end you know never quite know um, where we are with these uh, mills but um, I think that's probably um, um, got the gist of that then of course there is a bit of shadow on the on the uh, it's actually running underneath and round from the mill itself from the to show a little hint that we've got uh, some shadow there that's looking good that just goes up there brilliant that's best left well alone now I think let's certainly just tidy those edges up good okay that's all the fiddling done now let's put some shadow onto the building itself um, the little outbuildings and uh, plenty of blue a little bit of Indian red not too much okay sun coming from the left so there is an overhang there of the roof tiles like that there is obviously an overhang here and that comes at a bit of an angle like that nice deep overhang into the window reveals as well like that um, boom, 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 boom. yes overhang there and of course that roof would overhang on that little part of that building that stands out um, yep perhaps not as low as that there you go I'm putting too much into this there we are cuts that off at that sort of depth brilliant um, the window there oh and the overhang there now that would cast a shadow across this building I know that for a fact so like that and that finishes somewhere about there because that sits back a fair way so that's what that is that tells the viewer that that sits behind that now the mill itself may very well cast a shadow onto these so I'm going to put this all in shadow now there's a novelty before I shadow the underside of that down the overhang of that roof line and the overhang of that roof line yep looks pretty good to me just remove that because that did come out a bit too far there we are so that's looking good it's all coming out in clear relief um, just going to add a bit of shadow in this a bit bright in places there let's add some shadow there also adding some touches of shadow within this uh, greenery here and the brown areas as well just one or two little touches and as we go away as I did before just draw it with the finger right now we're looking for drama in the foreground how do we create drama in the foreground well this is my method right or wrong we need a cloud shadow in the distance that runs over there and over there like that and then we just take a damp brush because it's a cloud shadow and got a hard edge and we soften it all of a sudden we've got mood in the distance justifies those dark uh, areas there a bit more water a bit more blue a bit more red having to remix Indian red ultramarine not putting too much red in at this stage now we want 
sunlight to come onto that frontage there. So we're going to use a little bit of artistic license now and we're going to show a cloud shadow running across there and down there. And the only reason we know it's cloud shadow is because we soften the edges like that. It just gives it mood. When it dries, it'll be lovely and moody. A lovely moody feel. And of course, we can show reeds then on the tops of these shadows. Sweep that through. Allow that white paper to, to shine. Two little reeds. That's why I've used this brush because I can use the point to create the effect of reeds. Um, you're getting a little bit of shine on it. Once it dries, you'll see exactly um, what I'm talking about. And darken that area as well. Uh, not as dark as the shadow, but you'll see what I mean when it uh, finally comes up. Um, I'm just going to put a bit of overhang shadow down there. Just miss that. And a bit down there. Like that. Right, now as we come into the foreground, I'm adding a bit more red, a bit, bit more of the ultramarine. So this is a richer, darker colour. And for start off, I'm going to show some reeds. And I'm just lifting up with the point of the brush, like that. Just putting some little clumps, too much of a clump. There you go, look at that, don't need that. Get rid of that, there we are. Let's have another go at that area in a minute. And one or two little clumps there, because I intend having some reeds there. They're not all standing up at the same angle. And one or two just coming up there like that, at a, at a different angle. Right, now, here we go. Let's bite the bullet and lay in a nice deep dark cloud shadow there just where those reeds are lifting up so now we use a dry brush to finish off that fill in the reed bed lifting up so we've got a nice variation there perfect a bit more blue now really pick up the depth of colour in the lower right hand corner and this one is going to sweep like that there you go and then we soften that because we're looking for those reeds to pull up into that overdo that and then we just soften that here and there so we don't end up with a completely flat edge straight edge then all of a sudden all being well we get the eyes led to a nice warm area there and then through into the far distance the mill itself basically so now we're putting up a few more of these rather blue sort of um, reeds and using the point of the brush I'm trying to pick up uh, the tops in places they've got these little dots that quite often reed beds have like that There we are, I like that, yeah, if it's working, don't overdo it, best not to overdo a good thing, a good thing becomes bad if it's overdone, so just allow that to work its way through like that, perfect, look at that. A little bit higher in one place there. Lovely. Good.
one or two finishing touches. Now for these very fine finishing touches I'm going to use burnt umber with a little Indian red in there and what it is it's just a matter of these sort of edges down the back edge of those tiles there that's somewhere where occasionally you will see uh, a little variation of colour you will also see along the edge of these you've got to remember they're what they call pan tiles so they are quite uneven so we need to show an uneven line there which may not look a lot but I can assure you it makes a vast difference to the finished article it uh, gives that feeling of pan tile roofing just bang in that corner it's the corners that are also very useful to pick out um, yep and just some little touches there touches down there don't want to do too much not looking to overwork these areas um, not looking to do anything to the distance it's all about the tower of the mill and these uh, this building yep I've got a feeling that we need to take the surround away and uh, so sort of like get it uh, looking like uh, as if it's been mounted a touch well there's the finished painting as you can see um, nice composition taken from a photograph sorry a sketch that I made um, some while back um, I'm not sure of the date 2014 I think I said which is um, which is that particular sketch there um, I did that 2014 uh, Cly from the east it's looking at Cly from the east so you're looking from the more or less the the sea side of Cly facing out to sea be, sea be behind me here and that was this pencil sketch I did in 2014 and there you have a painting that's worked up from that so it's not always that you need to produce um, a painting straight away um, if you've got a little bit of sort of um, knowledge of the area a little bit of feeling of of the area um, and you've seen it um, quite often you can make it uh, you can build it up quite nicely from uh, from the pencil sketch all I need to do now is to sign it in the paint that I've used so I'm going to sign it nicely down here in my normal signature so everyone knows who actually painted it brilliant well that's the end of the demonstration Well, there we have it. Um, Clyde Mill painted from a sketch that I made um, a while back uh, of the mill itself, looking from the east towards the mill. Uh, and I've shown you how to uh, lay on the basic washers. I did use masking fluid for the sails, the fantail, and some of and the gantry area. But other than that, um, it's all white paper that's left. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the link, bottom right hand corner. And uh, you will see, receive notifications. And uh, we'll see you all again very, very soon. Thank you very much for watching.